In this video, I'm going to show you a single trick that is going to substantially reduce hallucination in your rack system. But before that, let's talk about context engineering for ritual augmented generation. So irrespective of whether you're using agentic rag or standard rag, if the context you're providing to LLM is bad, you're going to have garbage in, garbage out. So you want to make sure you have the best possible context for your LLM. Now, how do we provide the context? So this is what a vanilla rack system looks like. You have your user query, you retrieve documents and then pass those documents to the LLM for final response generation. Now, you manually set the top K, so there is going to be a lot of noise in the chunks that you return. So traditionally, people use a re-ranker on top of these top N documents or top K documents to reduce the number of chunks that you're going to be passing on to the LLM. And the idea is that the re-ranker is going to look at the relevance of the chunk to the query to decide whether to feed that specific chunk to the LLM or not. But in most cases, it's still problematic because for a given chunk, not all of the sentences are going to be relevant to the user query. There are going to be partial chunks that are relevant to the user query, but still you're adding a lot of noise. Let me show you a practical example. So we're going to index the DeepSeq 3 paper. The total training cost of this model was $5.576 million, which was pretty controversial when it came out. So I'm using my new local GPT, which is going to come out in a week. And I asked what was the total training cost of DeepSeq model? So it goes through all the different steps. The final answer that we get is the total training cost of DeepSeq is explicitly stated as 2.788 million GPU hours. So although the actual number is present in the paper, it's not able to find that number. Now, what is the reason? Well, as I said, garbage in, garbage out. So here are the different hyperparameters that we're using. We're using a hybrid search mechanism that is going to be combining dense vectors with full text search. Initially, we retrieve 20 chunks then we re-rank the top 10 chunks, and then we feed those into the Quint 3 8 billion model. Now, here are the top six chunks. By default, it only shows six chunks, so we don't even actually see the relevant chunk, specifically which mentions that number. But if you look at this, I am using a chunk size of 512 tokens, which is relatively large. So in total, you're going to be feeding about 3000 tokens to the LLM to generate a response. Now, if you look at the chunks themselves, so here it mentions that GPU hour count, but within the same chunk, we can see that there is a part of a table that is coming in. And some of the other chunks uh, talk about training mechanisms but they are not really relevant to the cost itself. Now, one idea would be to just simply reduce the number of chunks after re-ranking, but we can do better. Now, here's the output from the same pipeline with a small addition at the end. Now, in this case, instead of getting the whole chunk, we are getting only the most relevant part to training and the cost. The first chunk that goes in is combined with 119K GPU hours, and then it specifically mentions the training amount. This I believe is coming from the first chunk where it mentioned the GPU training hours. And the rest of the chunk was irrelevant to both training and the cost. So it completely discarded that. So now we are looking at about 500 tokens or maybe less that are going to go into the LLM. And if you look at the same response now, it says the total training cost of DeepSeq V3 is 5.576 million. And the cost is calculated based on the total GPU hours required for full training. Now, the only addition in this case is this pruning phase, which simply removes any part of the text that is not relevant to the question. So this is going to be out in a week's time and you will be able to play around with this. But let's see how it works. Okay, so this is based on this new paper that came out, I think in January, 2025, Proven's Efficient and Robust Context Pruning for Retrieval or Augmented Generation. So the idea is something like that, that when you have retrieved chunks, you still have a lot of irrelevant information. 
Now, what you want to do is you want to take a chunk and then look at each sentence, but you still want to keep the global context of the chunk and remove parts of the text that are completely irrelevant. So for example, here somebody is asking is, can you eat pumpkins every day? So the initial text is pumpkin is at its peak in the fall, which is not really relevant to the question, even though pumpkin as a keyword is present here, right? So now the Pruance model is going to only keep the most relevant text or sentences and simply discard the rest of the chunks. Now, the beauty of this is that it's not looking at sentences in isolations. So here is an example. If you look at this sentence, it may also help lower blood pressure. However, if you eat too much, you may experience diarrhea from higher dose of fiber. Now this in itself does not mention pumpkin at all. But if you look at the local context, then you can see that it's talking about pumpkin. So Proven's model is able to preserve the local context within a chunk and it's not just treating each sentence in isolation. And it also assigns a score to each of the sentence. So that way you can potentially use this as a re-ranker model with each sentence has its own relevant score. Now in terms of performance, it actually does a really good job. So if you look at some of the benchmarks results here, you can use Provence with and without re-ranker. And in general, it gets you state-of-the-art performance. Okay, so the model itself is available on Hugging Face. And based on the documentation, I put together this quick Google Colab notebook in case if you're interested. So first we need to install NLTK. Then you will also need to provide your Hugging Face token. So here is the model itself. And there is also a very high detailed blog post on Hugging Face, which goes through both the training and how to use this for inference. So I'm going to link this as well in case if you are interested. Okay, so just to show you a working example. Okay, so there is a small snippet which talks about the history of Shepherd's Pie. Now the question is what goes on the bottom of Shepherd's Pie? So I think, I believe here's the actual text. Now, when we run the user query along with the context that we are providing through this Pruance model, here's the expected output or the output that we get. So instead of all of this text and only picks this one sentence, which talks about what goes in the bottom of the shepherd's pie, and it also assigns its re-ranking scores. Think about this as a relevant score plus the compression rate. So you get about 80% compression if you use Pruance, which is pretty incredible, right? So this is a secondary re-ranking step, or you could potentially also replace re-ranker with uh, the Pruance model. So here's how they are using it for one case where you have the re-ranker output, and then you feed that into the Pruance model to get a prune text. But I think you can completely replace the re-ranking step with this, although this is probably going to add a couple of seconds, depending on how much text you're feeding. So it's a very interesting idea. I have been playing around with it for the last few weeks and it substantially reduces the context that goes into the model. And it only keeps the most relevant part to the question, which is pretty incredible. This is going to be available within local GPT when I release it and you can just enable or disable it. But there's one thing that you need to be aware of and that is the license. So you can't use it for commercial purposes. But I think since the training recipe is out there, so hopefully somebody will be able to train an Apache 2.0 or MIT license version of this. And I think this is going to be an integral part of any retrieval system that we see in future. Do check it out. I think it's going to be extremely helpful for RAG related applications. And if you need help with RAG systems, you can reach out to me as well. Details are going to be in the video description. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.